you probably like a good book. And you probably like a good movie. But what about a good movie based on a good book? How about that? What can possibly go wrong? Many, many things. But why? What's the problem? The material is already written. People love it. So are there any reason to stray away from the source and do something your own or, you know, just inventing something? What is going on? What is going on? And this question made me make research about these whole shenanigans. Why? Exactly why? What's the problem? Studios have money, resources, great material with a lot of details. Let's start with obvious changes, which is removal of certain plot-related stuff, like removing certain characters, changing their arcs, maybe adding something their own, y you know what I mean. The main reason behind removal is time limit. It is as obvious as it sounds. Nobody would sit, let's say, 12 hours in the movie theater, so they need to squash the whole plot into uh, standard, somewhat standard, one and a half or two hours. You know, there are exceptions, like the, the Lord of the Rings, but still, these three movies, around four hours. I don't remember exactly how long they are, but still, are huge, and they miss a lot, like a lot, from the books. In the aforementioned The Lord of the Rings, you know, we miss great stories of Council of Ants or encounter with Tom Bombadil, which is amazing. I won't spoil you, so if you haven't read the book, you know, you can read it. And if you've read it, well, you know what I mean. Just this removal has a domino effect on the whole movie. Certain subplots have to be removed because they would link to missed parts and would make no sense whatsoever to the remaining parts, or certain elements have to be adapted to fit a new story. Otherwise, plot holes will pop up, definitely. As an example, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, Fred and George, the Weasley brothers, open a shop. But where did they get money to do so? From a movie perspective, it's a plot hole, because movie plot is different plot from books, and books shouldn't be a complement material to this story, and it's a plot hole. We can read it how they got money in The Goblet of Fire. If we go back to the movie The Goblet of Fire, we can see that it lasts 2 hours 37 minutes, and if they included this story arc with Fred and George, they would have to include and other character like Luda Bagman and his arc, and his arc with Fred and George interacting, it would require even more time to tell this story. So they decided to focus on more important parts of the story. Another source of changes is the difference in the book and movie format. We can see on a single frame all necessary information, but in the book we need to read and proceed gradually to unravel what author describes and wants to tell us. On top of that, words are vague, but images are the opposite. They are very definite. When someone tries to convert a word into an image, that person has to make certain choices, which leads to differences in our interpretation of certain words and phrases and paragraphs and chapters and the whole book. When we go to a theater, given we have read the book, we have in mind our version of this story, but on the screen we see a movie and we see a particular interpretation of the story, interpretation of the director who made this movie. And then dissatisfaction has its roots in, in our comparison of our interpretation and his interpretation. But who says that our interpretation is a correct one and his is a wrong one, or vice versa? Let's move to the next one. How to show something impossible. I don't mean dragons or something tangible, which can be pretty well shown on the screens. I mean something, something more abstract. For example, the color out of space. 
a short story written by H.P. Lovecraft. And um, this is a story about a huge meteor that falls into a garden of a family and it mutates everything around it. The prominent feature of this meteor is its color, color out of space. That's the name. I'm going to read you an excerpt from the story, so we are on the same page. The color, which resembled some of the bands in the meteor's strange spectrum, was almost impossible to describe, and it was by analogy that they called it a color at all. How is that supposed to be adapted? This color does not exist in, in the world. Well, if filmmakers showed it on, on the screen, it would definitely exist, which is controversial. According to the story, it's not even a color, but it's called it only by analogy. So how is that supposed to be shown? The answer is symbolism. It's an art, and every art has symbolism in it. In the movie Color Out of Space, directed by Richard Stanley, this color is shown, but as violet with purple. It is important that these colors were chosen. But why? Why is this important? In culture, at least in European culture, violet color is associated with corruption and disease. It is rarely a curd color in nature, also is being used in different works. Disney is a great example. Maleficent, Dr. Facilier, and the Evil Queen all have violet color. Oh, it's time to wrap up, but I haven't mentioned the last thing I'd like to talk about. How feelings and emotions are represented in movies and books. Since movies are visual media, we very often, well, almost every time, see how characters cry, scream, hit something, express their emotion externally, because we can see it, and we can see what they feel, at least their reaction to their feelings. In books, most of the time, we see quite opposite. We tap into a character's mind, and we can see how character feels, what he feels, what he thinks about what he feels and how he feels. His internal struggle is more about psychology in in books. I don't I don't say that movies don't have psychology, but it's not at such great degree. As a conclusion, what can be said about adaptations? They're difficult to make, there are a lot of difficult decisions to make. And we need to remember one thing. I believe watching an adaptation, we don't need to focus on how our version of a particular story differs from a version of a director. We need to enjoy it as a movie, as a piece of cinema, and how it holds up as an independent work how it manages to break these chains and not rely on its source material in order to explain plot. That's about it. Thank you for your attention, and have a good day.